<clears throat> thank you, Clara, for uh, those words, and thank you to the Nutrition Council of Manitoba. Uh, it is an incredible pleasure to be here in Kevin's Riding today in Winnipeg with our other outstanding Manitoba MPs, Terry Bannon, of course, Minister Vandal. Mais il n'y a pas seulement les membres de notre équipe du Manitoba qui sont avec nous, il y a aussi la ministre Jenna Suds qui travaille toujours très fort pour les familles. It's also really good to see the Manitoba Minister of Education and Early Childhood Learning, Nello Altomare. Uh, it's great to know that we uh, share a past in schools, yeah. uh, and it's what brings us here today, exactly. uh, understanding how we need to put, uh, put kids uh, first and foremost, not just for today, but for tomorrow. Uh, we need more uh, teachers and educators in politics, so it's, uh, it's great to see, uh, see you as, as part of this, and it's so great to work with such uh, a positive, progressive government here in Manitoba. We can get great things done. And, uh, uh, and that goes on everything we do. Someone else who understands how important that is is National Chief Cindy Woodhouse Nepenak, who's also here today. Uh, Cindy, it's always so great to be able to make uh, announcements with you and work with you on making sure that everyone uh, in this country has a real and fair chance to succeed, uh, particularly Indigenous peoples who've been uh, put aside and marginalized and not included in Canada's success for far too many centuries. I just had to meet a uh, chance to meet with so many of the smart kids and hardworking teachers here at Elwick Community School. Thank you, all of you, for welcoming us here. Now, before I get into the meat of the announcement today, I do want to mention that we're following the wildfire situation really closely here in Manitoba. Another difficult wildfire summer is underway in many other provinces and territories as well. So, as always, our first thoughts are to uh, the safety and the support for the families that are impacted. Uh, yesterday's ministers Vandal and Sajit announced a joint investment with Manitoba of over $38 million to purchase wildland fight firefighting equipment. And this is on top of what we're already doing to support and train more firefighters. We're doubling the volunteer firefighter and search and rescue tax credits. And we're also investing in prevention and emergency preparedness, working in partnership, of course, with Indigenous communities. As we fight climate change, we're also taking these actions necessary to keep Canadians safe. It's a real pleasure to be in Winnipeg today. I want to explain what we're doing to help youth and families and offer a fair chance to everyone. Signing agreements with provinces and territories to build a Canada-wide child care system, more than 750,000 kids across the country are already benefiting from more affordable child care. Here in Manitoba, fees for regulated child care were reduced to $10 a day on average last year, with some families no more now saving over $2,600 per child per year. And we're also creating more spaces so that more kids can access this affordable, high-quality child care. The cost of living, including groceries, has risen significantly because of the after impacts of the pandemic and because of global inflation. So we're working hard every day to make life more affordable for Canadians. On top of all the money families are saving through childcare, we're also investing $1 billion to create a national school food program that will provide meals for up to 400,000 more kids every year beyond those served, served extremely well by existing programs. We're going to be working with provinces and territories and with great organizations like we've seen here who are the partners on the ground in the schools that make sure that this is not just uh, about uh, supporting kids so they have full be bellies for they can uh, study, but as Nello said, uh, creating community, but also learning valuable skills that work uh, and that will last them a lifetime. We are working with provinces and territories as well as our Inuit, First Nation and Métis Nation partners to put in place these programs. We want to make sure that students have the know that earlier this year, meal that they need. Canoe and Minister Altomare announced investments in school lunch programs. Nello, thank you for your leadership and your hard work on this. It's great to be able to partner with a progressive government here in Manitoba to make sure kids eat well and mostly can reach their full potential. Investir dans nos enfants aujourd'hui, c'est investir dans Investing in our children is investing in our future. The students are the next doctors, nurses, scientists, business owners. We have to make sure that children have the best start in life. We're bringing in in our budget is more support for after-school learning. 
We will invest over $67 million to support mentorship and academic assistance that will help students succeed, including Indigenous and at-risk youth. You see, we're fighting every day for a Canada where everyone has a real and fair chance to succeed. This is a choice our government has made. And something, as Jenna pointed out, that the Conservative Party opposes every time we step up for Canadians who need it. The, Parti the Conservatives always oppose it to our measures, but we're going to make sure that we will be there to offer a fair chance to every generation. Thank you so much for being here. I'm, I'm open to questions. Question, one follow-up. First question goes to CBC. Uh, CSIS Director David Vignon is warning Canadians against using TikTok in light of his comments and what he knows about how it operates. Do you think TikTok is safe for Canadians and do you see a, go a role for government in regulating TikTok? Well, obviously, as a government, we lean heavily on CSIS and our intelligence agencies to keep Canadians safe. And when the Director of CSIS is pointing out that uh, TikTok poses a real threat to the data security of Canadians, I think Canadians need to listen. Uh, obviously, we already took measures as a government to ensure that all uh, federal computers and phones uh, do not uh, have the TikTok, TikTok uh, app applied to them. Uh, that's a risk that we don't want for our government, but I know more organizations and orders of governments are looking at that very seriously as well. Uh, we need to continue to have a conversation with Canadians about how they remain safe online. Yes, there's a role for government, and we'll continue uh, to consult and work with Canadians on that. It's important that we uh, empower Canadians to make smarter choices about keeping themselves and their families safe online. That's one of the reasons why we're moving forward with an Online Harms Arc, uh, Act focused on keeping kids safe uh, and making sure that our uh, online world uh, is uh, as safe or even safer than our uh, in real life world. Right now, with uh, the uh, move the Americans made, we're going to see how uh, TikTok responds. The concerns are that uh, the data that TikTok collects on all of its users uh, gets uh, simply funneled to the government of China and uh, is used to, uh, you know, potentially for nefarious purposes. Uh, these are things that we are uh, very aware of, and we're encouraging Canadians to be very, very careful uh, about their online usage. Uh, as the company responds to what the U.S. is asking, them to do. We'll see if uh, there are changes that make TikTok a uh, more, uh, a less unsafe platform. Uh, we know that a lot of people, particularly young people, enjoy using TikTok and uh, we need to make sure that that usage is safe. So we're going to follow carefully, uh, but before taking any drastic actions, uh, let's see how the company responds. Next question. Hi, Prime Minister. Marnie Blunt with Global News. Um, given that the grocery code of conduct is not mandatory, how does your government plan on getting other uh, big grocers on board with it? Well, one of the issues is that Loblaws was uh, one of the holdouts uh, for this code of conduct. Most of the other grocery uh, companies, uh, big grocers, had already uh, indicated that they were happy to sign on to that. Uh, the fact that Loblaws is now uh, on board uh, means that there's a, a lot more chances uh, that it's going to move forward, which is what this government has been pushing for for a long time. We need more transparency, more accountability, uh, better competition within groceries because we know uh, even while these grocery companies are making billions of dollars in profits, Canadians are having a hard time putting food on the table. The government has uh, certain tools that we have been using to increase competition, to uh, support Canadians. Even an initiative like today's billion dollar announcement towards a school food program will take pressure off of uh, you know, family budgets in knowing that kids can get good breakfasts, good food uh, at school uh, is part of the help that we're giving. But seeing the groceries sign on to good, responsible behaviour towards Canadians that they profit from every single year, uh, that's a big step in the right direction. Next question. Uh, good morning. Uh, you've asked your immigration minister to create a regularization program for uh, for uh, immigrants who don't have legal status in Canada. Just wondering, um, what what's the status of that program? Uh, is it going to be rolled out before the fall? Um, listen, we know that 
people who aren't uh, here regularly need to be uh, be, need to be supported and taken care of. Uh, there needs to be either uh, a, a, a pathway towards regularization and citizenship, which I know uh, the minister is working on. In some cases, we need to accelerate deportation proceedings. Uh, there's a balance in making sure that the integrity of our immigration system holds. That's one of the reasons why Canadians are, unlike so many other countries in the world, continuing to be positive towards immigration because our immigration system is rigorous uh, and uh, it it is uh, able to do the work that that we need so as we make adjustments to make sure uh, that we're uh, we're supporting people right that we're bringing in people in the right way to continue to grow our communities and our economy and create this great diversity that we benefit from we need to make sure that it's being done in a proper way and i can assure you that minister miller is uh, is very much focused on that well, Minister Miller will be able to speak more to that if you ask him that question. Next question. Hi there. We've heard about uh, funding for fighting wildfires. I'm just wanting to know about funding for fresh water. Uh, we've had invasive species close a lake. That's a very popular tourist destination this summer. We've got a First Nation suing both governments for hundreds of millions of dollars. And we have a promise of a Canada Water Agency. When are we going to see something? It's supposed to be in Winnipeg. Could you please update us on the status? Oh, I can absolutely confirm that the Canada Water Agency will be here in Winnipeg. This is uh, a response to uh, the Conservatives who shut down the PFRA, the Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Act, which was all about uh, protecting water across the prairies. Uh, when Conservatives made cuts to the experimental lakes, when they made cuts uh, to, uh, to freshwater supports, to navigable waters, we saw for many, many years an underinvestment, an under protection of water, which is why uh, over the past years we have stepped up in significant ways in uh, restoring the science and research and working closely with jurisdictions that are willing to work like Manitoba on uh, protecting uh, freshwater resources, uh, dealing with uh, invasive species and eutrophication. There are many things that we're doing together and we're going to continue uh, to work with our partners to make sure that Canada's most precious research, the resource, the uh, freshwater that we have more of than just about any country in the world uh, continues to be uh, there for future generations. Part of it is continuing in our fight against climate change, continuing to recognize that extreme weather events are going to lead to both floods and droughts on top of wildfires. Staying strong in our actions against climate change is part of how uh, we continue to make sure that this, uh, uh, this part of the world is uh, sustainable for generations to come. We see the uh, Canada Water Agency up and running. Uh, we're continuing to work on it. We're hopeful that uh, we'll have more news on that soon. Next question. Uh, hi, Mr. Prime Minister. Um, can the city of Winnipeg expect some sort of funding, more funding from the federal government for cost overruns, latest cost overruns with the $2 billion North uh, sewage treatment plant? For many, many years, uh, the conversations with the province over this uh, uh, North, uh, North Winnipeg sewage treatment plant was, uh, were extremely challenging. Uh, we were there to be partners. Uh, the city of Winnipeg, I remember long conversations with uh, former Mayor Brian Bowen, uh, trying to get this over the line. And now that we have a strong provincial partner, uh, things have been moving forward. We recognize that the costs of everything with global inflation have gone up. There are challenges on that, and I can tell you that uh, our mayors, our conversations with, uh, with Scott at the, at the city and our conversations with uh, uh, WAB at the province uh, continue to make sure that we're delivering the infrastructure Structure that's going to enable uh, continued growth in housing, continued response to uh, all the great, uh, great growth in the city of Winnipeg that we know needs to continue. La next question. Bonjour, Monsieur le Premier Ministre. Morgan Le Maire, avec le Morgan Le Maire, La Liberté. Regarding your food program, can you provide us with more details? What's the proportion of the provincial? contribution and what will happen in schools. The national food program that we've been announcing today is $1 billion throughout Canada. We want to make sure that 400,000 400, students have access to a healthy breakfast. Now, the delivery of this program will be done in partnership with the provinces as well as with schools and school boards. We already have pro partners on the, on the ground. 
they always need more fundings to improve the quality of the food given to children. But we want to also broaden the offer within schools. We will be coming with federal funding to improve the situation throughout Canada. It's not a federal program within schools, but by a better funding for these partners, for programs that are already in schools in partnership with provinces. Learning this morning that a child under five in Ontario has died of measles. Uh, they were not vaccinated. Uh, how do you respond to this news? <clears throat> We've seen, unfortunately, over the uh, over the past years, uh, too many uh, outbreaks of preventable childhood in, in just, uh, illnesses because of a vaccine hesitancy that uh, has been growing uh, over the past uh, decade uh, around North America and indeed around the world. Uh, my best advice uh, to all families uh, is to listen to your physicians, uh, talk with your doctors about what uh, vaccinations are right for their kids, uh, make sure that you're doing everything you can to keep your kids safe and healthy. Uh, this is a, a tragedy that nobody wants to see. I can't imagine what that family is going through right now, uh, but I do know as a parent uh, that all of us want the absolute best for our kids, uh, and I recommend that everyone uh, listens to their doctors, their health professionals, on how to keep their kids safe. Uh, that's part of what we're trying to do here with the National Food School Food Program, uh, give our kids the best opportunity in life. Uh, we will continue to uh, be there as partners, as parents do everything they can to keep their kids safe. Uh, on Ontario Premier Doug Ford has written to you asking the federal government to pause approval of new safe supply sites and, and to review the existing ones. Um, just wondering what, how you respond to that. We have been um, very, very clear that the toxic drug crisis and the opioid epidemic uh, is something that we need to respond to with uh, the best science possible, uh, with the best support for people struggling with addictions possible, and with an emphasis on community safety. Uh, and that means working with partners right across the country. And it also means making sure that we're taking this with a public health approach uh, and a community safety approach as opposed to uh, necessarily criminalizing or further marginalizing people. But no order of government can do this alone. That's why uh, we're focused on working with uh, people on the front lines, whether it's at the prov provincial health systems or at the cities, uh, to keep people safe. And we will continue to work in uh, a science-grounded way of uh, dealing with this horrific tragedy that has hit so many people so hard. Thank you, Prime Minister. That concludes today's press conference.